Farood, CEO of Delta Hawk and the primary investor. Um, this year is a very special time for Delta Hawk. April 7th, 2023, Delta Hawk achieves its FAA type certificate uh, for our 180 horsepower diesel slash jet fuel slash sustainable aviation fuel engine. Uh, it's been a long road. The original founder of Delta Hawk, Doug Doers, still on our board of directors, um, had a vision almost 20 years ago. But 20 years ago and a lot of man hours, almost a million man hours, uh, has produced a certified engine. And we look forward to changing the industry and helping the industry remove lead from the atmosphere by running on jet fuel, remove carbon footprint from the general aviation community by running on sustainable aviation fuels and even on jet fuel comparatively to Avgas. When you look forward, the story is more than the engine. The story is about the engine, the engineers, the customer base, the suppliers that all create that. To put Delta Hawk in perspective, we are 100% U.S. owned. We are 100% U.S. manufactured in Racine, Wisconsin, just down the road. I welcome and invite any of you to come for a tour. It's kind of fun to be able to see that. We're just 20 minutes south of the Milwaukee airport. I look forward to our supply chain. It's all U.S. based. We have two parts manufactured outside the U.S. by U.S. friendly uh, suppliers. Uh, and the rest are all made, almost all, within the Midwest uh, region and 180 miles or so from our factory. When you look at the development work that's happened in Racine, you look at what's possible today and the technology that we were able to employ today when it comes to computer analysis, when you look at the technology that's able today for 3D modeling and CAD software, this engine could not have been produced as efficiently or as effectively 30 years ago, 50 years ago. But modern technology has allowed us to be able to do that. While much of the general aviation has been acquired by for, you know, foreign entities, Delta Hawk remains U.S. proud. As you know, certification is not an easy task. It took Delta Hawk almost 20 years. My family has been involved now for just over eight years of that time, of which we brought in significant amount of money, talent, and resources from people in order to be able to see that through to certification to now begin the airframe integration efforts for experimental, for cert type certified, for military applications with their one fuels mandate, when th whether that be drones or other things. Delta Hawk has a promising future. When you look forward to other things beyond sustainable aviation fuel. We look forward to the future of the market when it comes to other horsepower, and whether that horsepower comes from scalable engine design, hybrid aviation. We believe Delta Hawk has a leading position to be able to achieve where the aviation engine market is, propulsion market is going in the future. It's going to be a great year for Delta Hawk. It's going to be a great year for general aviation. We're proud to be a part of it. We embody and believe our slogan, Power Reimagined. And with that, I'd like to turn us over to Dennis Webb to give you a little more detail, specifically about the engine. Look forward to questions that you may have at the end. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. First of all, good morning. First day of Air Venture. It's a good day, right? Thanks, thanks for all of you for coming. Uh, I know many of you through past conversations over the years. I talking to people already. It's great, great to see everybody again, especially on what's a great occasion for us. Um, as background, I'm our director of marketing and uh, certification. Uh, background: I'm an instrument-rated pilot, and I'm an FAA DER. So I was respond DER. Excuse me. I was responsible for. Uh, I'm sorry, she said I'm at my mic. I was responsible for the certification of this engine. For those of you who have been following us, you know it's been a long time. <laughs> Trust me, it seemed a lot longer to us. Trust me, it seemed a lot longer to us. 
There's a good reason why there's so few general aviation, new general aviation engines certified because it's hard. It's much harder than we ever anticipated and that's why it's taken so long. It had to be lightweight and compact. You have to deliver high power. It had to have the, uh, the duty cycle of a race engine, the durability of a, of a semi, the reliability of a spacecraft, yet be fuel efficient, require little maintenance. In our case, burn jet fuel, as Chris talked about, make propellers happy so it has to be smooth, and of course, meet the strict requirements of FAA regulations, which are not, not difficult to meet. And I'm not bashing the FAA regulations. They're tough for a reason. That's why aviation is so safe. So it was a hard job to begin with, and guess what? We chose to make it harder because we refused to stray from our original vision of a simple engine with few parts. Things like we are direct drive, we don't have a complicated gearbox. Uh, things like we don't have a complicated electronic FADEC with all the sensors and wires and ECUs that are, make an engine very complex. In engineering, Simple is hard. I'm going to say that again. In engineering, simple is hard. Simple is difficult. As an engineer, it's a lot easier to spin an engine fast, throw four valves per cylinder, dual overhead cams, electronics. That's an easier solution than making something simple. And we chose to keep our, our, to our roots to make a simple engine with few parts and this engine represents true innovation. The technology in this innovation is remarkable. So as you've heard from Chris, we proudly received our type certificate back in April. That was a very, very tough milestone for us to meet. Obviously you all know that. Um, especially for a clean sheet aviation design. We didn't have legacy parts to deal with, so every part, every assembly was from scratch certified. Um, I think I don't think Chris mentioned this, but we, we did a count. We had over 20,000 pages of documents that we had to approve, well, come up with and approve between specifications, the drawings, uh, engineer reports, testing, test plans. And again, I'm not bashing the FAA. That was all done. That's why aviation is, is so safe. And I would be remiss, as a lot of people like to bash the FAA, I would be remiss if I did not both compliment and send my thanks to the fine folks at the FAA who supported us through all these years, specifically the Chicago Aircraft Certification Office and the Minneapolis MIDO. They supported us, they bent over backwards to help, help us through this very long journey, in addition to a lot of help from Engine Prop Standards Branch up in Boston and the Milwaukee FISDO as well. We owe them a huge gratitude. Of, uh, we're indebted forever uh, for how they helped us. So we are pleased that our engine was selected by NASA I'm sorry I have to read this, for their subsonic single aft engine project, also known as SUSAN. Uh, that engine was, was built and shipped. It's now at their Glen facility in Ohio. We were also selected by Amp Air uh, for a hybrid aircraft proof of concept, uh, which is upcoming here shortly. And likewise, we have had great interest, and actually great interest, not the right word. We've had overwhelming interest from certified airframe manufacturers from the largest to the smallest and from experimental kit manufacturers as well. Truly overwhelming interest. And we've had a long head of fan base with individual pilots, commercial operators, uh, Defense Department as well, and that's only grown since we got that magical type certificate. So as Chris said, it's going to be a great year coming up. Um, we are right now doing uh, additional endurance testing, both on our dynamometers and on also verification and flight evaluations in multiple aircraft. We continue to learn and continue to prove to ourselves what a great engine this is. Um, I should also add that we have three of the most highly renowned and uh, experienced test pilots on our staff who really know how to evaluate aircraft in the, in the engine. Right now, production parts are entering the supply chain process, and deliveries of our first engines will be in the first half of next year, first half of 2024. We are accepting fully refundable deposits for reservations, and actually we started doing that as soon as we announced our type certificate. You could enter those on our website, and we have received truly uh, enthusiastic support through people uh, uh, entering deposits for, for engines. From a support standpoint, our warranty has now been established. It's going to be 24 months. 
or 2,000 hours, whichever comes first. And if, if the operator is willing to supply ongoing engine monitoring data and oil analysis, we're going to add a year to that, 36 months and 2,400 hours, whichever comes first, which is truly a, a, a remarkable warranty. I think it's the leading warranty for piston aviation aircraft out there. We're also actively uh, right now uh, recruiting and looking for service providers and maintenance professional around the world. Um, and that will be supported by a, a whole lot of things, including we have uh, our documentation our user documentation, our service and maintenance documentation, I've never seen such fine documentation. Yeah, I work for the company, but when you see it, you're going to be amazed. Our, our documentation was written by ANPs for ANPs. Truly remarkable uh, work. So be, in addition to that, uh, there'll be our service providers will be supported by on, uh, our own in-house staff, but we're also developing a training program right now, which will be available online worldwide, of course, um, including certification. That will be released uh, at the end of this year, before the end of this year um, in 2023. Our in-house aircraft um, integration team, Chris already mentioned that, consists of engineers, uh, fabricators, and a and technicians. And right now they're developing firewall forward packages for both certified and experimental aircraft. Uh, those are still in the works. None have yet been announced, but as we develop the kits and they're commercialized, we'll of course announce to all of you in the public the, the packages as they become available. Some of the developmental problems over the years is, you know, we have one chance to do this right as Delta Hawk as a brand, right? And we don't want to misstep. So a lot of it was in longevity of parts. It was, there were several things that we learned over time that we wanted to improve to make this thing bulletproof by the time it hit the customer. And, and that really delayed us. We improved our cooling. Uh, we improved our piston designs. We've improved a lot of things that really just improved the robustness of the, the complete propulsion solution. Because we don't want problems in the field any more than the pilot in the field wants them. So that really took our time to do it right, to be something that we're proud to sell within the industry. So now, I'll get to yes, we know that uh, YASA is, uh, is going to be coming up uh, and with the cross uh, departmental uh, bilateral bilateral agreements that FAA and YASA have, like I knew there was a word I yeah. was looking for, um, that will be coming. Uh, but we started with the FAA, again, given the great partnership that we had uh, with the Chicago office uh, and Minneapolis and, and Boston. So. Um, yes, this will we will look at, at certifying this around the world, but we started with the FAA. Yeah. You said previously two words that are kind of, of interest. Uh, one was credibility, the second one was uh, hybrid. So can you explain a little bit for just one word? So what we can find behind it? Uh, to answer your question a little bit, the scalability side, uh, the beauty of our engine being as uh, elegant, I don't like to use the word simple, uh, Dennis, I like to use the word elegant in reduction of parts. Um, it was actually designed to be scalable, a uh, number of cylinders and things can be changed without a whole lot of redo when it comes to an engineering aspect. So our plan, we've kind of done the hard work from a cylinder and a power cylinder and, a, and that perception. The, the second question when it comes to hybrid, the core technology that I'd encourage you to come visit and learn more about when it comes to our compression ignition engine is that it likes to run loaded. It likes to run either at full horsepower or very close to full horsepower and that's what we've optimized it for. So when you look at the future of a hybrid system where you have a added uh, horsepower from an electric assist if you want to call it for uh, takeoff, Cruise is going to be relying on for extended range especially, Cruise is going to be relying on the internal combustion engine. And it's going to be relying on it to run at almost full power all the time. And that is kind of the mindset that our engineers took during the development process of the fact that this engine should be optimized for running at almost full power all the time to give us that complementary half of a hybrid solution. So that's kind of where we've seen the success even in a couple of the projects we've already won via NASA and Ampere is the way our engine mates pro very well to a, a future hybrid application. When you 
say this hybrid, does that mean that it's going to be electric generator or engine plus electric drive? So uh, we've actually quoted projects in both directions, both generator and uh, the, call it a, a serial application of electric assist plus shaft horsepower. So go both ways. Good questions. What else? So another one. <laughs> Scalability. Uh, now we have four cylinders, so could we expect a six to get to which power range? So we haven't officially announced what our next range is. We could go six, eight, ten, twelve. Um, you know, in a hybrid application, you, you look at uh, what uh, Amp Air has announced with a company called Red Aircraft. Uh, they use a V12 to, to achieve replacing a PT6 in a hybrid application. The, there are other, there's many different markets and there's a lot of opportunity. And uh, we, we do believe that we can scale this to, a, to compete against any of the engines out there for the different power ranges that not only general aviation but the military needs for UAS, UAM, vertical lift uh, applications and things. So um, our engine is a tractor and a pusher. Uh, so it can, you know, it can be mounted different ways. It can counter rotate. Uh, there's some features that we built, like Dennis mentioned, into it that uh, we're trying to think future-proof the ability or maximize the amount of markets that the engine can be used in, maybe even beyond aviation applications too. So. Right now you're certified at 180 horsepower. What does it take to expand that particular four-cylinder engine to higher horsepower? Uh, we are, yeah, it's 180 horsepower, um, and again, I, I like to couch that a little bit because I'd love to show the, the peak torque curves and some of our high altitude performance that actually improve the scalability of what that means compared to an Avgas engine today. All horsepower is not created equal when it comes to thrust for an engine. Um, the, what that takes within our four-cylinder family, we know we can go up. We just have to do additional testing. We can actually go down slightly, very easily. Um, with just additional amendment to our ter current certification. Um, we, and then we, beyond that, we know we can scale it with different number of cylinders for future, for future horsepower ranges. So it actually maps pretty nicely. Okay, last question or? Thank you for your time.